consumers are becoming uh, more savvy and more aware of what the brands they love, how they're creating product, how they're sourcing product, um, how ethical they are. I do feel that because consumers are more savvy than they've ever been, they have more access to information, especially around values that are important to them, like sustainability, like ethical ways of sourcing product. And because of that, they're holding brands and retailers accountable more than we've ever seen. The consumer now is really thinking about the way they purchase things more so than they have in the past. But what's different now is the fact that consumers can now do all of the research. They can go on and check certifications of specific brands. So you have brands that are getting got certified. You're having brands that are being able to uh, look at, uh, you know, have organic uh, cotton certification. So uh, when you're able to search that on big brands like Nike or uh, big, big, even bigger brands like Gap, it provides to be a real learning experience for the customer and gives the customer a sense that they now are in control of where their money goes and they could actually put their money towards a purchase that makes them feel better about the environment. So from a sustainability perspective in retail, the one thing I look for actually when I'm thinking about who's leading the pack in terms of their efforts is who's um, made the commitments and registered science-based targets. Um, that's a non-governmental organization that tracks based on the Paris Climate Accords and the 1.5 centigrade commitments. I mean, the retailer or the company or, or the organization can submit their targets um, and then uh, uh, science-based targets will evaluate them and tell them, based on their industry and their sector, how much they're contributing. Um, so the first thing I always look at is, is, is a company making those commitments. And what I see is that there are, are a lot of European companies that are, retailers that are, um, and the U.S. is starting to come along. Uh, but one of the big challenges when I talk to U.S. retailers is that they, it's very hard for them to make commitments about reducing something they're having such a hard time measuring. Um, and science, true science-based targets are not just about buying carbon offsets to get to net zero. They really are about reducing emissions. I think that young customer is now questioning more and more. Um, social media, TikTok, uh, playing a great role in informing the consumer about what these brands are actually doing. There's a lot of stats around uh, Gen Z and Gen X and how they're willing to pay for more sustainable product. And I think we're actually seeing that come into play now with a lot more purchases around resale, um, around circular product, around uh, brands like Patagonia and Levi's, and even the luxury brands are doing a really great job. Brands like Miu Miu, for example, are taking vintage dresses and redoing them in order to, to, to create uh, an, another collection. Uh, we're also in the same vein, I guess in the same brand family, you're seeing Prada doing the recycled nylon. Uh, this is the type of initiatives that we are seeing so many different brands take now. So it really is about brands wanting to make sure that they are being sustainable, but going to the archives of what they have to try and upcycle their newer collections by taking older collections. And then there was the whole collaboration with Levi and Ghani that uh, took old salvage denim, uh, denim from maybe 50, 60 years ago to create different product lines and different SKUs. So this is something that we're gonna start seeing companies do a lot uh, more of, especially I think the uh, companies that are able to do smaller collections, that are a little bit more nimble and are able to target the customers more directly with those, uh, with those collections. So any brands that are ethically sourcing their product, but also being transparent in their practices, I think that's where we are starting to see consumers get really excited because once they can see where their product is coming from, they can really get behind uh, and align with the values of the brand as well as the brand aligning with the values of the consumer. So fast fashion um, is really a conundrum when it comes to conservation and reducing waste and all of those things. And their business is driven by the consumer appetite for product. Um, low price, constant change over constant newness, constant fashion. So it's a really hard 
uh, you know, act to balance against. But what I would say is that there are a number of fashion, fashion re retailers that are making strong commitments. For example, H&M is one. Um, they've set science-based targets. They are undertaking a recycling um, endeavor where they're installing smart recycling bins in their stores globally. And their commitment is for every 50 pounds that gets donated and they can re recycle and get into the aftermarkets um, and not, not discard. They will plant a tree in the Amazon. So when the consumer drops the garments into the bin, they see a digital screen that tells them how much they're recycling, how many trees have been planted, um, and also offers them you know, an opportunity to become a more loyal customer of each hands. So that's a really good example, I think. Um, I also think, though, that on the heels of fast fashion is coming re-commerce, which is growing leaps and bounds. Uh, companies like ThreadUp, the Vestair Collective, uh, many others we can talk about. Um, so it's really about understanding what the, the future of the business model is when reselling previously owned pro products is becoming so much more popular. Retailers really have a long way to go when it comes to convenience, marrying convenience and sustainability of their brands and their product. So according to the Data Catalyst Institute, brands, especially brands that have omni-channel presence, are able to reach more consumers. So we're seeing brands now do this omni-channel presence, look at different ways of selling their merchandise digitally to the tune of 79%. Coming out of two years of, of, of pandemic and many lockdowns where they wanted product and they wanted it at their doorstep the next morning, um, and retailers accommodated that. So, but how, how do you then balance that against your objectives to reduce carbon emissions, reduce waste, conserve water, all of those things? Um, and there, but there are definitely ways that we can do it. You know, I think a lot about packaging. I think about, particularly in the beauty industry, with you know um, the higher caliber products you're buying, the more packaging you seem to get. <laughs> um, so how can we rethink things like that? You know, how can we rethink things like recycling and re-commerce? And many, we see many apparel retailers starting to dip their toe into the water of taking back their own brand by re-commercing their own products and, and taking that, making that that whole circularity around the products they produce so that they maintain control of the brand. Um, so there's lots of things we can do from an innovation perspective um, when it comes to th things like denim and washing. Um, how do we reduce water? How do we come up with new techniques to be able to get that that level of, of, of fading that we want and the washing that we want without overusing water? So there are many things that can be done in the back end that do don't affect convenience for the consumer, but definitely contribute to achieving sustainability goals. I see a lot of brands are looking to get faster to market, um, but faster to market in a way where we can reduce material waste and overdevelopment and physical sampling. And we start enabling uh, digital ways of working, digital product creation, and that's where we're going to start to see a lot of reduction in waste, but also brands are going to start to think about how can we get more innovative in our, our material development and our textile development? What can we make that is better for the environment instead of microplastics polluting the oceans today? Which is really going to, I think it's going to make a big impact uh, all the way down the value chain. We all saw what happened when the world shut down back in 2020 and actually was a very positive impact on the climate. So people are more in tune to it now than ever, I think. Um, and for the future, I think we're, it's, we're just going to have to be maintaining those trends. And retailers are going to have to make decisions to bring their customers along and their consumers along, not just to wait until their consumers are demanding it. They need to get ahead of it.